Our next presenter is the founder and executive director of the Office of Film and Veteran Affairs Innovation Center at Kansas State University. Recognized as one of the most military inclusive public research universities in the country. Over the past 10 years, he has researched evidence based practice for veterans transitioning to higher education, the workforce, and then back into society after military service. He completed a research project exploring post-military transition as a life event. He serves as a board member of several veteran service organizations and is a pioneer in the use of performing arts for social change in veterans reintegration. Please welcome our birthday boy today, Dr. Art DeGroat. I, uh, I like, great introduction and thank you very much, but I kind of liken myself to the Forrest Gump in this emerging genre of, of military and the arts. I've been involved in it for over 10 years uh, from a university perspective, and as my bio said, uh, I was given a charter when I retired from 22 years of active uh, federal service as an Army officer uh, at Kansas State University to, uh, to establish this major enterprise and try to make our university uh, the most military inclusive uh, uh, university in America. And, and we're 12 years into this work, and, and probably about two or three years into it, I just kind of far as up stumbled my way uh, into our performing arts theater, and we were going to present a, a veteran's piece, and, and my, my theater director was not sure, he's not a veteran, he wasn't sure, would it offend a military audience, would it offend a veteran, is it properly portraying uh, the, the, the lifestyle and the lives of military veterans, and, and so I was doing due diligence uh, with this piece, and, uh, and I'm calling the producers in New York, and, um, and so I'm just thrust into a world that I'm completely uninitiated to, uh, and that kind of got me in this. And, and so what I want to do now is very quickly, I have no videos, so this should be, this should be relatively safe for you and I uh, today. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about some of the things I've done and, and what are the lessons I've learned as a practitioner. Uh, and also as a newly minted social scientist, I got my doctorate a year and a half ago, uh, as was mentioned. And, uh, and, and so I, I kind of need to know, how is this working? Why, why are the arts working? Why are these projects touching veterans' lives why are non-veterans really starting to understand the military life's life uh, from, from arts engagements when all the other sources are, are, don't seem to have that kind of impact? So I want to share both my practice and then some of the insights from actually kind of, kind of looking at why this may be so, so useful. So as I said, I've been very fortunate to have uh, quite a, a, an experience, uh, 18 major uh, nationally touring arts and military projects. Uh, kind of diverse across the, the, the whole spectrum uh, from theater, music, dance, magic, comedy, culinary, spoken word, as, as you can read there. Um, I also mentioned some personal research, and, uh, and I've been fortunate, again, the Forrest Gump part of it is, as I've worked with some of the best uh, producers, art makers, artists, booking agencies, presenters, outreach coordinators, um, so, so I've got, as a non-arts person, I got a chance to work with and become friends with a lot of the, of the, the entire team that, that does this kind of work, and I've gained some, some perspectives uh, on that, and I'll kind of share some of that stuff. I want to do a quick run-through of some of the projects that I've done. You might be familiar with some of these. My first one was uh, actor Stephen Lang does a one-person live theatrical performance. Uh, Beyond Glory, based on a, a best-selling book about personal, the human side of, of eight Medal of Honor recipients. It really helps tell the story of, uh, of these heroes, but not as heroes, but as real people. It, it brings the humanity, this piece, to, um, to, to what, uh, what service members and service in combat is. And they're not just mythical uh, action heroes, they're actually real people uh, before, during, and after their war experience. And, and so I've learned the authenticity of, of how an artist can portray some of these stories differently than a historian. And that was very valuable to me as, as kind of a humanist. 
Um, of course, if some of you may know the Army, the Army had its own uh, touring performance company called the, the Army Soldier Show, and these are amateur uh, soldiers that become, uh, they put together a, a, a company and they travel all over the, and, and, and tell a story about the contemporary Army, and I think because of budget cuts, they just, they stopped doing the Army Soldier Show, but I was involved in that for many, many years and bringing it to Kansas at different venues. Uh, to tell the, the army story through through the uh, through theater of actual actual soldiers and veterans. Um, this was one of the best projects I've done. Uh, Joe Good Performance Dance Company in San Francisco. Uh, Joe did a lot of amazing work uh, with at-risk people, the AIDS community initially, and then it was on his heart to do something for for veterans uh, when the wars were starting. And, and he was very interested in the human uh, condition of resilience and how do people fall up after trauma and not fall down. And we brought him to Kansas State, did a, did a residency uh, for a week, uh, culminating in a live performance, a most beautiful piece. You can YouTube it. It's, I ask you to do it. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. And, and we, the whole piece was done with actual commentary of, of his interviews with actual veterans and their family members who were at Fort Riley, Kansas, who were, who were, who were back from the war, uh, di disabled and, and broken, and trying to put their lives and themselves back together. And he captured this. Uh, I would just tell you very briefly, I've never been to a dance performance in my life prior to this, and I was so worried about lining up all the, the veterans and the soldiers, I really didn't think about the art making piece, and I sat there the night of it, and I sat in my chair, and I felt, uh, I felt water hitting my lap, and, and I was looking up in the, in the theater, and, and I realized it was coming from my eyes. I was crying, and I, for the first time in my life, that I wasn't, I didn't cause myself to cry, I was crying and I wasn't aware of it. And I realized there's something special about how the arts can communicate things that myself as a combat veteran wasn't even aware that I could recall in my own memory. So, so it was a beautiful thing. Again, a, a, another thing I learned from doing. This is my, my most favorite piece, uh, Bass Track Live, On Guard Arts in New York. Toured 40 cities in two touring years. Uh, most recently, with, a, with the support of the uh, Midwest Arts Alliance, uh, we presented it down to Fort Hood, Texas, uh, five performances, over 3,000 soldiers. Fort Hood, Texas, commanded by my dear friend, Lieutenant General Paul Funk. We served together as captains in the first Gulf War. And pa Paul has one of the, the largest suicide problems of currently serving military. And, and I said, Paul, this sounds crazy, but I really believe an arts-based intervention. If you put your young soldiers in a theater and let me bring this p art piece to tell this story of the first Titanic Marines, uh, it will actually influence these young millennials to, to seek help uh, and, and kind of destigmatize uh, that it's okay to get help. And uh, we're waiting now with the, we partnered with the Intrepid uh, Center Payroll Health Program that you just heard about uh, at Fort Hood, and, uh, and we're progressively collecting the data to see did this arts intervention uh, actually help and motivate uh, these young, the young people and their families to go seek, seek the help that they, that they need and deserve. And PTSD is 90% curable. If, if they, the disorder is curable, people always live with, with issues after war. We all carry that. Um, but uh, so, so this is a problem that could be solved if we just can get the soldiers to, to go get help. Uh, Aquila Theater out in New York, the Trojan War, beautiful piece. Uh, was involved with that, and a lot of workshops with veterans, uh, helping them reframe from traditional uh, war stories of the Trojan War, reframe their own experiences, to give them another method of making meaning and making sense out of their war experiences, um, and again, using arts. I'm still working on this project. Some of you may recognize the, the group Diavolo. Uh, they were a finalist on America's Got Talent last year under the uh, uh, artistic director uh, Jacques Heim, who was one of the principals of uh, Cirque Soleil. Um, he's an amazing man, and, and his studio in, in, uh, in Los Angeles, he, he, on, on days they didn't have any rehearsals, he rounded up a bunch of, of, of veterans. Uh, some of them were homeless or out of the VA center in rehab. Um, drug addiction, all these problems, brought them together and built in six months builds a company um, uh, and teaches them movement arts. He says these people have to move to restore their, their, their skills. These were great Americans that had been broken, and now it's time to restore them, and he believes his movement, uh, not dance movement, is going to how to restore them. And, uh, and this has culminated just recently. Uh, they sold out three performances in the Kennedy Center last month. And this is, this is one of the best uh, restorative programs I have been a part of, and I've committed three years of my work to, to help them continue this stuff. Uh, I was uh, involved in the project Last Flag Flying. It's, this is film. Um, and in fact, to be honest with you, I, uh, I actually backed out of it 
out of the project. Uh, I was going to help them go to military communities and do their premiere prior to the national release of the film. And, uh, and after getting, finally getting a, screen, a screener's copy, I realized that this film was still perpetuating the old myths of Vietnam veterans as broken people. And, and I said, I, I backed out of it. And, uh, and so I, I got to be careful to go to Hollywood because I, I made a lot of people mad. Uh, by, by not doing it. But, but the other side of this work is you have to be an advocate for the veteran and you just can't jump in an arts project if it's not serving, uh, serving their true needs. I don't think the film did that well, so. Um, now I have a positive thing. Uh, has anyone seen the film 12 Strong? It's a current film about uh, the first US response in Afghanistan after the 9-11 attacks. Um, the actual character played by Chris Hemsworth is uh, actually a K Kansas State University graduate class of 93, Mark Nooch. Uh, who, lives, who lives here in Kansas. Um, and uh, so this film is doing a wonderful job accurately of portraying what these, what these men and women are doing in, this, in the new nature of war. Um, and I also got personally to an uh, opportunity to help Mark transition out of the military. Uh, and that was a very emotional event, helping the nation's most prolific warfighter uh, transition back to, to normal civilian life. Um, and, and so we're using this as a platform Anyone recognize this guy, Henry Rollins? Uh, first American uh, punk rock guy from the group Black Flag, but he's a very, very accomplished, award-winning spoken word touring artist. And he's made 13 trips with the USO to Iraq and Afghanistan. And he has some very, very good perspectives on veterans' military service. And, and so I support some of his work as he tours and helps pr tell the story through, his, through the spoken word art form. Chef Robert Irvine, became good friends with him. Again, he's part of the USO program. We brought him out to Kansas. He uses live cooking culinary shows like you'd see on TV. Um, but, but then we bring him out, and he, and he goes into military bases. He works with chefs and cooks of all services and, 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 and builds them up and offers them a transition when they get out of the service to enter in, into the culinary world, the commercial world. And uh, so I do a lot of work with, with Chef Robert Irvine. Uh, a good friend, Phil Cly, uh, he was a Marine. Uh, he, he got out, got his GI Bill, uh, went and got his Master's of Fine Arts and Literature, wrote his first and only book, and it was a National Book Award um, several years ago. And then, then he went on a speaking tour all over the country, and, and I was working with him a little bit about to present the literary art form as how it's telling contemporary veteran stories. Kevin Spencer, is an, uh, uh, he's a retired illusionist. He's toured all over the globe many, many times for 30 years, and he's perfected uh, the use of veterans uh, working with, with um, um, developmentally challenged children by teaching the veterans, uh, disabled veterans who, who really can't get regular jobs. He teaches them magic and they pair them up with special education teachers. They go into schools and he has a program called Hocus Focus, work, working with, uh, with children with disabilities uh, and helping them learn tricks as a sense of building strength. And, and so, so Kev, I'm, I'm Kevin's helper with linking up the veterans community. And lastly, uh, my next big gig is I'm going out to the Hollywood Charity Horse Show with the Shatners uh, who run that. And uh, we raise a lot of money every year through that uh, to support equine therapy, equine art for veterans. And they're now affiliated with Diavolo Veterans Project. So, so this is becoming a big movement to support the veterans art and veterans uh, and arts therapies for veterans in the Los Angeles Hollywood uh, community. So, so that's a little bit of some of the projects that I've done or I'm doing. And I only say that not to brag, but, but to, to give you the, best, the, the rest of the story. Um, one of the things I've discovered with all these projects is um, a lot of times the art maker, the producers, the presenters, they didn't really realize what's the purpose, how, how is this piece of art serving the military or veterans community. Uh, it wasn't really defined. They know they wanted to do this piece, they know it was valuable, but they didn't really precisely know what they wanted to do. And, and so I've been helping them uh, on these projects try to identify what is it that this piece is going to do or not do, and that's been kind of helpful to focus that. Um, in many cases, these pieces are a catalyst of social change, uh, like the general was talking about. It builds community. It informs the 99% the, the who have never served in the, un, in the uniform. It informs them in a very non-threatening, realistic, authentic, accurate way, and a humanistic way, what it is like to be in the military today, and how it's different, why it's different, uh, and what we can do to be empathetic, uh, not sympathetic, um, towards these people as we help them reintegrate and get back into society where, where they deserve to be and live he healthy lives. Um, we also talk about the individual. You've heard other speakers tonight, today talk about art has a rehabilitative, a restorative, and therapeutic component too. It's codified in science. We know how it works. And, and so, so we just need to use it more often. 
the problem with a lot of these therapies, like animal-based therapies, if they're, if they're not codified in medical science, then it's, it's not covered by, by insurance, and therefore you really can't prescribe these things. And so, so part of this movement in the healthcare is to recognize, wow, two minutes? Okay, they're going to go real fast. Um, I'll skip that slide. Uh, I think everybody can get these slides. Um, Here's what veterans need. This is why veterans need social change. They need an appreciative understanding of what they've been through. Uh, and the bottom line is, as I said, empathy versus sympathy. Thank you for, no veteran likes thank you for your service. Um, it, it's a sympathetic response. They don't want your sympathy, they want your understanding. Um, and, and so empathy is what's needed. If, if you really want to include these people, it's, it's don't thank you for your service. May I include you in my community is, is kind of the, the empathetic uh, perspective. Um, so why are they unique and effective? Um, here's a good quote. Please just read this really quickly. Um, Art has a particular power to reconfigure the terms, images, and effects of matters of our concern. Everybody in America is concerned about veterans and all these issues, uh, and the arts is that it provides a different narrative, a different discourse to discuss these things than what you read in the newspapers and, and other things. Why is that? I don't have all the answers, but there's something magical about aesthetic knowledge. And I'm now d digging deep into the science of how does aesthetic knowledge, if I read you facts or showed you someone perform the same content in, in a live performance, you would, you would interpret those two, the same thing in a different way. There's something powerful. This is why all of this works, and we need to connect more to the science of aesthetic knowledge. It was said uh, for many, many, many uh, decades and generations in America that the experience of war was incommunicable. Unless you lived it, saw it, you would, you would not understand it. Uh, and it has been proven with this generation that it is. Uh, largely because of technology uh, on the battlefield. Um, there's a great book, it's called I Was Friended at the Front by Dr. Lisa Silvestri at Gonzaga University, and she talks about the presence of social media and how capturing the war experience with content and, 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 and emails and Skype, how all that content now gives us a whole new way to create art around this content uh, that's very accurate and authentic, and you, we can now experience, you don't have to go to war to understand war, the arts community can, ex can explain that. Another major piece that I've used uh, as a great study, 2007, the intrinsic impacts of, 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 on an audience member of, of, of witnessing live art. These are scientifically proven things that happen when you're an audience member. These things are happening to you right now. Some of you are captivated. Some of you, I'm, in, I'm stimulating your intellect. Some of you are feeling an emotional connection to what I'm saying. Some of you see the spiritual value of loving and caring for veterans, la, 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 la. So see, these things really work. And this is how, this is how the arts affects from this platform to your platform. So aesthetic knowledge, artistically portrayed, how audiences re receive this information. This is the most powerful medium and platform uh, to help all these veterans' issues that we're here today. I'm not gonna brief this slide, but I've served as the role of intermediary. I've been a guy who's been a veteran, a war veteran, I'm an educator, I'm a social scientist, and I work with the veterans, I work with the, art, with the artists, and, and I serve as, in, as a guy in between all these, and I'm a big advocate that all these projects need someone with my role to do these things. Uh, and, the, and, and so I offer this chart to anybody, and these are the functions that I have been asked to serve I have no training in it, I just kind of figured it out, and those are some of the things I've done. Um, so I think this might help other people in this capacity. There's a lot of science out there about why this all works, uh, if you're a researcher. Uh, I told you about the Fort Hood project. Um, that's, that's, that's a picture of there from, from the uh, newspaper at Fort Hood. And I also want to mention, I have a, one of my major partners of all of this work at Kansas State is the David Woods Kemper Veterans Foundation here in Kansas City, and the executive director, uh, Caleb Jackson, is sitting here. Caleb, thank you very much. Uh, and, and so uh, I'm very indebted. This work doesn't happen at a university. None of it, my work is, is funded by the state of Kansas. Uh, this is all done with private donations to my work to help the arts community. So, so Caleb and everybody, thank you. Thank you very much.